Merry Christmas. Uh, it seems uh, it's third time I'm uh, being a messenger on Christmas. <laughs> Thank God for helping me uh, uh, to deliver a message every uh, uh, Christmas season. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> the today, uh, the title uh, is uh, the hope of Simeon and Anna. And my uh, subtitle of this passage is Those Who Are Waiting For. Uh, uh, the key verse is Luke chapter 2, uh, verses 30 through, 30 through 32. Uh, maybe you can read them together. Uh, it's on the screen, right? Okay. Okay, let's go. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to Gentiles, and for glory to your people, Israel. Another key verse is uh, Luke chapter 225. Can you read together? Okay, let's go. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was on him. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, uh, thank you for uh, helping us to uh, uh, come to worship you this morning. And thank you for uh, the Christmas uh, <clears throat> that Jesus became our Savior and Lord. And we may have Jesus in our hearts on this Christmas. And we may, may have uh, the hope of the God's kingdom, like Simeon and Anna. And we may lead, leave led by spirit. Thank you for this time. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So our life uh, is an endless uh, series of waiting. People live each day waiting for something. <clears throat> Outwardly, our uh, lives uh, seems to be very similar, but depending on what are uh, waiting for, the outcome of our lives would be completely different. In this passage, <clears throat> there are godly people who are waiting for the Messiah. When the long wait was over and they met baby Jesus, they finally tasted true peace and joy in their hearts. Uh, Uh, look at verses uh, 21 through 24. Uh, these verses telling about the story of baby Jesus and his mother Mary performing circumcision according to the law, law of Moses. Uh, <clears throat> can you read them together? Uh, verses 21 through 24. Okay, let's go. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, it was named Jesus. The name the angel had given him before it was conceived. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. It was jo jo uh, Jewish uh, custom that uh, Baby Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day according to the Moses, Moses law. And Joseph and Mary named him Jesus. The name Jesus means he will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1, 21 says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Luke chapter 1, 31 says, You will conceive and give him, give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. A Jewish woman had a purification time after giving birth to a boy. They brought baby Jesus to Jerusalem to pre present him at the temple. They followed the law of the Lord carefully, uh, which said, Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord which refers to commemorate the salvation of Israel's firstborn sons uh, during the Exodus. 
Jesus was, the, uh, was no ordinary child, and Jesus is the Son of God without a sin. And he does not need a circumcision, but they did not treat him as a special one or did not give him special privileges. Jesus went through all the requirements for Jewish baby boys. They dedicated their firstborn son uh, to the Lord. They also offered a sacrifice in keeping uh, with the law of the Lord. Like Mary and Joseph, for those who could not afford lamb and dove for the sin and burnt offerings, two doves or two pigeons could be given instead. Um, <clears throat> Joseph and Mary was, uh, were serious about uh, following God in God's way. For them, that was keeping uh, the law of the Lord and living a life of prayer and devotion to God. Jesus raised by uh, godly parents. When I was young, I was very shameful that I was uh, raised by uh, godly parents. I didn't like my unusual name, uh, Pedro. <laughs> In Korean, uh, Pedro is how you say uh, Peter in, uh, in Korea. <laughs> and often uh, become a uh, laughing stock among my friends. <clears throat> Many of my friends thought I was rich to live a big and fancy house because my father was a doctor and my mother uh, was a uh, nurse officer. However, our family's life was uh, completely opposite of worldly people. Uh, we had to move a lot uh, from house to different house, and uh, we had to leave always around the uh, campuses. I dressed okay clothes and live in okay houses and eat okay foods. <laughs> I was full of complaints in my heart uh, to my parents that I was uh, grown in uh, godly parents. However, now after I met Jesus, I was so thankful for my uh, Bible name and for my parents, for their faithful life and dedicated life for the following God in God's way. And thankful for them for their so many tears of prayers and the word of God. Pray that God may raise up many godly parents like Mary and Joseph, and pray that we may be a good example of godly uh, parents to our children. Verses 25 and 39 are about two people waiting for Christ in Jerusalem. First, Simeon is waiting uh, <clears throat> for comfort of Israel. Look at verses 25 through 28. Okay. Now, uh, can you read them together, uh, 25 through 28? Okay, let's go. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, and the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the Lord required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, here, waiting for consolation of Israel means waiting for forgiveness and salvation through Christ Jesus. Simeon was righteous and faithful to the law, and he had right relationship with God. He was a godly person of faith who feared God, and his life was separated from, uh, from the world. Simeon was waiting for Christ, who gave him forgiveness of sins, and salvation in the right relationship with God and in his holy life. The presence of the Holy Spirit was on him, which means the work of the Holy Spirit helped Simeon wait for salvation through Christ. Even when baby Jesus came to the temple, Simeon entered there inspired by the Holy Spirit and met baby Jesus. Simeon was instructed by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he had seen the Lord, Messiah. This indicates that uh, the Holy Spirit had been worked on Simeon for a long time. 
the Holy Spirit gave Simeon the hope to wait for the Savior through Christ. And the Holy Spirit convinced him he would surely see the Christ through revelation. And the Holy Spirit gave him strength to wait until he finally met Christ. When Simeon met the baby Jesus, he was so happy that he praised God. Here, the Simeon's encounter with Christ was led by the strong work of the Holy Spirit. This, this teaches that we sinners um, have had the work uh, of the Holy Spirit for a long time uh, for the forgiveness and salvation by believing and accepting Jesus. It was the work of the Holy Spirit that we met our Bible, Bible teachers uh, to study the Bible where we were born in Christian family, were godly parents, and began to learn faith. How did Simeon praise God? Uh, <clears throat> look at verses 29 uh, through 32. Uh, let's, let's read those verses together. Okay, let's go. Sovereignly Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Here he said, Sovereign Lord, in verse 29, which means Simeon lived a righteous and godly life by serving God as Sovereign Lord, the master of his life. And he said, you may not dismiss your servant in peace. In other words, Simeon was ready to die in peace since he could see with his own eyes Jesus, the Messiah. There is nothing more to hope for in his life. Salvation through Jesus Christ gave Simeon true satisfaction and peace. Look at verse 29 again. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in, in, uh, in the sight of all nations. In Luke's Gospel, Mary rejoiced in God's Savior. Zechariah called Jesus the horn of salvation, who brings salvation from our enemies. And Luke also mentioned the knowledge of salvation through forgiveness of sins. Angel declared to shepherds, the Savior has been born to you, the Messiah, the Lord. In Acts chapter 4, 12, Peter said, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given, given to mankind by which we must be saved. <clears throat> Salvation is indeed good news for all mankind because it is what all, all people need. And praise God for our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at verse 32 again. <clears throat> Simeon said, A light for revelation uh, to the Gentiles. The prophet Isaiah foretold this light uh, to the Gentiles in uh, Isaiah chapter 42, 6, which says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for all the people and light for the Gentiles. Again, Isaiah chapter 40, 49, 6 says, It is too small a thing for you uh, to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This word is filled with death and darkness. But Jesus is the light of the world. John 8, 12 says, Whoever follows him will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. Jesus is the light for us to bring us out of darkness. Again, Simeon prayed in verse 32b, which says, And the glory of your people, Israel. The glory is the presence of God. God dwelt with his people. The Jews had great, greatest privilege to have God dwelling with them. 
Now the Messiah had to come to dwell among them to show them the way to, do, to draw all nations to the light of God. Here, everyone wants to have true salvation, uh, light, and glory. People often think uh, they would have them when they solve uh, the sorrow of major issues. Of course, when we solve, uh, solve the things which is urgent, may, we, may, we could be happy, <clears throat> maybe for a while. But you know this is very temporary. When one problem is solved, another issue will come up again. If we're following and solving them, we have no choice but to live as slaves to those problems for the rest of our lives. The fundamental problems are sins, death, and the soul. This is a problem caused by living God, the Creator. Only by returning to God can you get the answers to our fundamental problems. So God gave us the way to God through Jesus, the light of the world. We can return to God by believing in Jesus because Jesus, Jesus is the only, only way uh, to the salvation. John chapter 4, 14, 4 says, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Simeon, waiting for the Christ, had the right relationship with God and lived a life led by the Holy Spirit, that he was not tempted by sins. Acts chapter 238 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. To live a uh, true, peaceful life, being led by the Holy Spirit like Simeon, we must, be, we must change our life, life purpose, and uh, life failures. Our object our uh, waiting for <clears throat> must be changed. An object of our hope for must be changed. As we live a life of faith, we may be easily by temp- tempted by sins. However, we, may, we live in the hope of the Lord to come again. We can overcome the temptations and be filled with the Holy Spirit like Simeon. After speaking about the baby um, as the Savior, light, and the glory, Simeon spoke some heavy words uh, to Mary. Uh, Look at verses 33 uh, through 35. Okay, let's, let's read them together. Okay, let's go. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and raising of many in Israel and to be a sign that was spoken against, so that the thoughts of many's heart will be revealed. A soul that will pierce your own soul too. So here uh, in verse 34, the falling and raising refers to be judged or saved. And a sign that will be spoken against means that Jesus is hated and killed on the cross to save us. In verse 35, to reveal the thoughts of many people's hearts shows that Jesus, the light of life, all the weaknesses and dark sins are revealed. As a mother, Mary will suffer as she sees Jesus suffering and death on the cross, like the sword pierced her own soul. The work of, the, the work of human salvation uh, <clears throat> begins with realizations of sin and uh, repentance. For this, God gave us the law to reveal the sin inside us. But people do not want to, uh, their sins uh, to be exposed and try to hide, them, hide it and excuse them uh, if they can. Usually they, when they uh, began to know the Bible, uh, first it, it is very, very enjoyable. But later, our hearts become harder because the sin is exposed. Isaiah understood this in uh, chapter 30, 13, says, in repentance, 
And rest is your salvation. It quietness and trust is your strength. But you would know, you, you would have none, none of it. It, it is surely painful, <clears throat> but this is the process that we must go through uh, to be forgiven <clears throat> and saved. Just as we must uh, know uh, the cause of our disease uh, to receive an optimal treatment, we must know our sins and repent uh, to be forgiven. When sins are revealed before the Lord, uh, we should not excuse or avoid, but humbly repent and be forgiven by God's grace and mercy through Christ. In doing so, we can have a right relationship with God and enjoy true happiness. This is the reason why Jesus said he didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners, in Mark 2, 17. Those who acknowledge and confess their sins find forgiveness and new life. Second, there was a godly woman, uh, Anna, in the temple uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, <clears throat> verses Look at verses uh, 36 through 39. Okay, can you read them together? Okay, let's go. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Peniel, the tribe of Asher. She was very lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Com coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town, Nazareth. <clears throat> Here Anna uh, married and uh, lived with her husband for seven years, and she became a widow until she was 84, 84 years old. Um, when, when she married, uh, she would have lived with uh, hope uh, for her husband. She might dream of having uh, a beautiful family uh, with her husband, but after losing her husband, uh, amazingly, she, she, she devoted her, herself uh, to serve God by fasting and praying day and night in the temple. As she was a prophet, uh, she has a special insight from God uh, to recognize the baby Jesus. She came up at that very, very moment and gave thanks to God. And she spoke about the child uh, to all who were uh, looking forward to uh, the redemption of uh, uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Anna spoke about the child to all who were looking forward toward, uh, to the redemption of uh, Jerusalem. They are uh, those who are uh, waiting for the uh, Christ, for his forgiveness of sins and, and salvation. The prophet Anna uh, testified to them, the baby uh, Jesus was the Christ who would, who would save them. Anna's recognition and uh, her, her testimony of baby Jesus refers uh, Anna herself was eagerly waiting for uh, salvation uh, through Christ. For Anna, her husband's eagerly, uh, early death was a faithful situation. However, she overcame, overcame it by faith, uh, waiting for Christ. There is term so-called a uh, spoil spoon or gold spoon in Korea, gumsujo and huksujo. Uh, in old sayings that um, there is a, uh, a dragon is born in a small stream. A great man may be born of humble uh, parents. Or today, however, many people say that dragon is born in money stream. <laughs> a man, a great man may be born of rich parents. Uh, this is a uh, sarcastic uh, word on unfaithful, unfairness uh, of our uh, society. People often uh, fall into <clears throat> faithful sorrow or suffer 
uh, from depression. We can learn from Anna's faithful uh, life of overcoming her, uh, her, uh, her fate, uh, hoping a heavenly kingdom. Life in this world is like a, a stranger, uh, just like a passing by uh, for a while. For, for our lives as a stranger, it's important to know uh, we, are, uh, we are going after death. As we live uh, with the values of the kingdom of God, hoping for the uh, Lord to come again, we can overcome any faithful problems. When we live with the values of the kingdom of God, it's as if we live in God's kingdom, even though our uh, physical body is still here on the earth. If Anna was jealous of her, uh, of her uh, friends and she felt inferior to them, her life should be very tired and she might make others be tired too. But she <clears throat> lived before God's, God's value and lived before faithful God and she realized the truth and the truth will set her free. Jesus is the truth who sets her free. Amen. There are many people suffering from uh, various, a lot of different uh, faithful problems. It is very sad to see people around me who suffer from uh, despairs of destiny but you know that, that the, the sad part is I cannot make them free. We cannot make them free from fatalism. We cannot make them live a new life. I want to pray for you to have values of the kingdom of God and pray to God to, to overcome your fatalism. You will not only experience true happiness, and true freedom from people, but you also help those who fall into despairs. In all circumstances, we can overcome our despairs or fatalism when we rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks to God, hoping for the Lord to come again. Verses 40 through uh, 52 um, uh, record the growth of the uh, baby Jesus as a young man. How does Jesus' uh, <clears throat> baby grow? Uh, look at verse 40. Um, let's read uh, verse 40 together. Okay, let's go. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus has grown into physically uh, energetic boy, and, and he was growing uh, intellectually and uh, uh, filled with heavenly wisdom. The grace of God was upon him, and baby and Jesus grow healthy, physically, intellectually, and spiritually. I can say that our lives uh, end up uh, dying while waiting for something. What are you waiting for? Parents um, might waiting for their children uh, to be a top students at school. Those who have in a military, uh, especially in Korea, it's, you know, it's mandatory, right, for two years. Uh, they are waiting for the date of discharge. And those who have entered a college are waiting for uh, maybe the day of graduation. Uh, the sick are waiting for complete healing. And the poor are waiting for uh, being rich someday. Those who are working hard may be waiting for a, a, a retirement. I know a few uh, colleagues at work who are uh, close to retirement age and told me uh, they want to move in uh, warm places after retirement uh, because the uh, Wisconsin is too cold. <laughs> However, uh, based on this passage, I don't think a warm place can give them true peace and joy. <laughs> 
the end of the hope, a long wait might be uh, below uh, your expectations or be better than you expected to give you a moment joy and comfort for a while. But they don't last uh, <clears throat> longer, as you know from your uh, experience. Then we again looking for something else, and we, we, uh, we work harder, and uh, we're willing to uh, wait for better life. This is like uh, being thirsty again after drinking water. Right? Uh, people uh, seek true uh, peace, uh, true joy, <clears throat> and true satisfaction, but many don't know where it comes from. What gives us so much joy and peace? So we, may, we have nothing more to offer in our lives. What makes us satisfied and happy enough to say that we have nothing more to hope for? We must wait for the Lord and God's kingdom to, for, to forgive us for the complete salvation. When the Lord comes again to judge us, our salvation is completed. The hope of the kingdom of God with a perfect happiness will be fulfilled. Simeon and Anna waited for Jesus' first coming, and now today we are waiting for uh, Jesus' second coming. Waiting for Jesus' coming is a matter of our life purpose and life, life uh, value. Waiting for uh, Jesus is to, uh, to lead uh, by doing the things that the uh, Lord will be pleased with. God wants to save our lives from sins and judgment. In order to save the world, uh, Jesus has to suffer on the cross and raise his disciples and I went to the word and command them to preach the gospel. So waiting for the Lord means uh, through the Bible, we will grow spiritually and repent our sins, obeying the word so that our salvation can be fully accomplished. Let's have faith <clears throat> waiting for the Lord, uh, who is Jesus, who is uh, uh, salvation, light, and the glory to us. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to work uh, in our hearts like Simeon. And also let's pray for a life of victory, hoping for God's kingdom like Anna. Amen. <clears throat> let's go back to... Uh, uh, Okay, let's read the uh, uh, key verse together. Uh, okay, let's go. For me, my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a life for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And verse 25 together. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was on him. Amen. Let's, read, uh, let's pray together. <clears throat> uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, your uh, salvation. And thank you for being a light and uh, a glory to us. Uh, may the Holy Spirit work in our hearts. Uh, may live by led the Holy Spirit. You may live for a holy, uh, holy hope for God's kingdom through Jesus Christ. May uh, Jesus' light uh, of the world shine in our hearts. You may have any uh, peace and joy uh, in this uh, Christmas season. Uh, thank you for uh, the message, and thank you for this uh, prayer time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.